And as I was watching that screen, I felt a warmth from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. It was as if there was a force purging and purifying my body. Hello warriors, how are you all doing? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Shane Obisheson. And if you are, you know, a return viewer, thank you for coming back. So today I have a guest in the house. And um, you know what I stand for? I'm a life purpose coach, a certified life purpose coach. And it's all about, you know, finding purpose through your gift and talent. And sometimes the path that we walk onto our purpose differs. Some of us, we find our purpose in a comfort zone. Some of us, our purpose come to us through pain, something happened, and then we realize that, oh, this is what God has called me to be. So here in the studio, I have someone special. She's a mentor, a godly mentor. And she's the voice that God has given to us in this era that we need for our children. So I will allow her to introduce herself and tell us the story, how it all started. So over to you, Ma. Okay, hello everyone. It's good morning from here, Nigeria. My name is Auntie Taye Lolu. I'm the visioner of a working NGO for children raising the bar with Auntie Taye Lolu. Um, today I have been invited to this platform to lighten you up, to infuse light into your minds. And in what dimension will this be? It will be in the dimension of knowing that most times God works in mysterious ways. And as the Bible said, that his ways are not our ways. That heaven is higher than the earth, so are God's ways different from ours. Like my host said earlier, a lot of us um, easily find our purpose. We easily come into what God intended for us to do. But for some of us, others, us in quotes, we have to walk through thorns. We have to go through fire. We have to go through sometimes the unimaginable kinds of pains before we come into a discovery of self. Um, I did a post this morning on my Facebook wall because of something that happened last night. A man called me last night from the Netherlands and he said, Antetaye Lolu, I saw your video on Facebook, one of your videos, and I decided to trace down. I saw a video that you did on grief and pain, how you found your purpose and all of that. And so we had a brief chit chat about it and he was so enthralled. He was so awed by the mysteries and walking wonders of God. I am a woman whom pain and grief pushed into discovery of self and purpose. Now, listen to me intensely as I go on. I got married about, um, I got married 2010, 13 years ago. I had three sons in quick succession. In fact, within three years, I had three boys. My husband was a banker, a successful banker. I believed I had it all going well for me. You know, I had no reason to suffer anything. I did not suffer lack. I didn't experience struggles. I had a very thriving career with the presidency. I was progressing, being promoted as I'd went due. So I saw no need for God. I didn't go to church. As a matter of fact, um, the place where we lived um, around the time when the unimaginable happened, um, my, one of my neighbors even had to ask me sometime that, Madam, you don't go to church. Why? On Sundays, you're always at home with your family, blasting music and all of that. Please get closer to God. I would just, Madam, please, God knows how he deals with us. Or, you know, I felt complete in myself. I saw no need for God in my life. I believed then that everything I was, everything I had was partly by my own efforts because I was good. That was why God brought me to the pedestal. I operated. I did not know that God had a different plan for me. Mm. You see, my friends, sometimes when God deposits treasures in you, when God has a purpose for you, 
when God has a grand need for you, God will employ any strategy to get your attention. Like you, a lot of you might already know, when God created each and every one of us, he created us purposefully. God does not make mistakes in anything he does. So for every of us, every one of us, pardon, there's something we are on earth to do. There's a reason why Abba made us win that race we ran, which I call the battle of the spams, where a lot of things had to come into play before you became the one that won. You could not have won for no reason. There was a reason why you won. And so when God sees that the youth, the capacity in which I need this person is one where other destiny are tied to him or her, God can employ any strategy to get your attention. Have you forgotten that even the Bible says that the evil spirit from the Lord, the, I think afflicted was his soul then, the evil spirit from the Lord, the evil spirit from the Lord. So life is rotational. The Yorubas would say, sometimes the good can turn to you. Sometimes the bad can turn to you. And the Bible says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. But he promised us that he will bring us out from every of those afflictions. So God did not give you a guarantee that nothing bad will happen to you, that you will not go through, through you know, turbulent times in your life. It's just that the turbulence that we go through as individuals differ. And the depths are in, you know, various dimensions. Okay, let me go back to myself now. I saw no need for God. I believe I had it all. No church, no prayer, nothing. I was just taking care of my three boys, my husband, my career. And then suddenly it happened. My son, my third son died suddenly. In fact, in the most unexpected circumstance. Um, it was a Friday, I think it was 8th of um, April, 2016. I had him May 27th, Children Day, um, 2015. And that is why sometimes I, it makes me understand and realize more that there is a grand reason why all that happened to me happened. You know, because I had him on Children's Day, May 27. that means for the rest of my life, every day Children's Day is being celebrated, I will remember that this was the day I had my third son. Such coincidences do not merely happen. So it makes me to know that God had a hand in everything I went through. So it was a Friday, um, April 8th, 2016 we were preparing for his first birthday because myself and my husband knew that was to be our last child you know he was the third son and we were planning to do is uh, to celebrate his first birthday in a very merry manner so I woke up that morning I was in a very jolly mood I had no premonition of what was to come I prepared jollof rice and chicken, you know. Amongst all my children, Mokola Joe was the one that ate early. He was the one that never felt sick. He was the chubbiest of all my children. He mm. was the one whom I least is expected. I least expected that such circumstance could snatch him from me. I mm. fed him. My younger sister was living with me. I briefly had to go to the office. So I said, oh, Onida. Take care of the children. I will soon be back. You know, she was very kind and loving to them. So I had no suspicion or fears. I left in a vibrant mood. And around 11 o'clock in the morning, I was called by my neighbor. Uh, Mommy Jibola, can you come to the State General Hospital now? I said State General Hospital. I was still, you know, our office is right beside my own office. I think she had been called too. So she said I should come before I could say Jack. She was already in my office looking very scared. I said, mommy, what happened? Mommy, Jessica, why are you looking this way? Why, why should I go to general hospital? She said, Mokola just fell in the house that is in the hospital. You know, but something in me that day sang. 
I knew something fatal had happened. So I got to the general hospital. When I got there, a lot of nurses and maybe some of the um, people that came to see other people that they were already holding me, blocking me. I said, let me pass through now. They said, my son is here. And I just stretched my neck eagerly. I saw a stretcher right before me with my son, my 11-year-old boy on the stretcher, gone and lifeless. Mm -hmm. You know? I felt cold shivers sweep down my body. What is this? You know, let's cut it short. I don't want to get to emotional day. We buried him like one hour after. My husband joined me in the hospital. My husband took him away. The other people took me home and my son was gone like that. Now, as I journeyed through the process of healing, of course, I was overwhelmed with grief and then uh, sorrow, unimaginable sorrow. Um, I almost went into delirium in the process because it got to a point when I began to speak to myself. I began to, you know, I was going psycho. So, mm -hmm. and I realized that in spite of the fact that people were coming into my house in numbers, trying to console me, make me feel better, everyone having one consolation or the other, mm -hmm. I still could not find healing. I was looking for closure. I kept looking for closure. I kept looking for closure. What if I had not gone to the office? What if, you know, and the most painful part was that um, he was sleeping. You know, my younger sister bagged him. She was mopping the floor, the tiles. So I think when he fell asleep, um, she was supposed to have laid him down on the bed, but she felt she wanted him to sleep deeply first. Mm -hmm. So as she was mopping, she tripped. So as she tripped, she fell and my boy hit his, the back of his head on the tiles, you know. Mm -hmm. So from sleep, they said when the head hits the tiles, he started gasping. Mm -hmm. So, and the girl ran out and, help me, help me, help me. They said he even died before they left the house, but they still got him to the hospital. You know, it was a domestic accident. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that consoled me was, after I kept trying to look for closure, I kept asking God, why me? Which a lot of us do. I kept feeling I had been abandoned. I had been, I was a relegate before God. Mm -hmm. One of the things that consoled me was that even if Satan was the one who killed my son, life belongs to God. Yeah. If it involves life, it was God that took the life. If he was left to Satan alone, that accident could have mm -hmm. made him maybe become a vegetable or had a swell on his mm -hmm. head, but not life being taken. So mm -hmm. I said, okay, I'll take solace in this. Yorubas will say, awake on Jabola on Mamosi. God saw when my son fell. God knew when his head hit the tiles. If God wanted to save him, God could have saved mm -hmm. him. After mm -hmm. all, the, after all, he's a savior. But for it to have happened that way, I just consoled myself that it was God that took the life. So I started the journey towards healing. It was tough. It was terrible. I would not lie, I would be honest. He was, you know, the God I had never sought before. I didn't even know how to seek him. I was not a praying person. I was not a church person. I was not a Bible reading person. So I didn't even know how to seek but God. I was alone. I was lost. I was fallen. I was thrown into the deepest path of grief, if there's anything like that. So there was one morning I dropped my other two boys in school. And I just came back home. As I came back home, um, my DSTV had expired. So you know this 100, they were advertising TBN. That Bishop T.D. Jakes, this, Joel Austin, this, and uh, this person, this, they, you know, pastors, TBN, they were advertising in 100. And I said, like, oh, what's this TBN? What's the channel? I wrote it down. So immediately I called my husband, please pay for DSTV. It's expired and I'm home. So he paid it and everything. So the moment the DSTV came on, I just, op I just switched to TBN. Bishop T.D. Jakes was on. As I listened and watched Bishop T.D. Jakes, I felt a kind of warmth within me. I felt as if there was a force enveloping me, telling me sorry. I got more interested. Immediately TBN was off. 
Joyce May was over, Joyce Mayer came on. Joyce Mayer started to talk too. And in the course of listening to Joyce Mayer, she was saying something about relieving, relinquishing your life to God. That whatever happens, I'm in your hands. Even though he slays me, yet will I trust in him. Mm -hmm. You know, I now began to think, so this is how consoling and relieving God's word is. You know, I now ran inside. I went through my husband's book uh, shelf. I saw a new notebook pad. I brought it to the sitting room. I began to jot. I got curious. I got interested. So it now became a cycle of when I dropped the kids in school, of course, I was still on leave from work. I would Glue, stay glued to TBN, listening to the word of God. So there was one particular night I went to ease myself. I was going back, you know. When I eased myself, I came to the sitting room to do something and I just felt something tell me, switch on the TV. I switched on to the TV about 1 a.m. midnight. As I switched on the TV, I came on to, I think it was T.D. Jakes that time, let it go. If they were to be a part of your journey, they wouldn't have left you. If they had left you, then they were not meant to be in the future with you. Let it go. You know, I just began to pray. And as I was watching that screen, I felt a warmth from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. It was as if there was a force purging and purifying my body. So after I had that feeling, I shivered a bit. I kept watching. So as I kept watching, I now had an uncanny urge to emulate what T.D. Jakes was doing. I kept walking. I would walk to and walk through, trying to mimic what he was saying. So I laughed a bit at myself. I went back to sleep. The next day, dropped the kid, children in school, came back home. The urge came again. You know, as I was watching who was preaching then, I think it was uh, uh, um, Grace something, one female preacher like that. You know, I sat there, I was trying to mimic what she was saying to, you know, and now, what am I doing? What am I, like something was pushing me to speak. Mm -hmm. So to cut the long story short, it was that discovery of that TBN that got me to become more curious about God. I now began to pray intentionally to God that God heal my heart. I've heard in one of the teachings that the Holy Spirit is a comforter. Is there any way the Holy Spirit can comfort me? Please, Holy Spirit, comfort me. Please, I'm in so much pain. You know, the kind of relationship I began to build with God now became one where I began to speak to God as if he was by my side. Mm -hmm. And now I experienced tangibly the friend dimension of God. So much so that I would be in the kitchen and I would just say, God, can you please uh, hug me? Can you please enwrap me in your arms? I'm so sad right now. I don't know why you had to allow Satan to take my son. You know, I now began to experience a friendship dimension with God. I found it enthralling. I found it exciting. I found it to be something I actually needed. In fact, at that time when I began to discover God, I, I, there was a day that a woman came to see me, you know, as she came in with two other women, they were women who sold things along my street. So they came that we were supposed to have come a while, but this and that, you know, as they were just talking, I just said, can we pray? Let's pray. They looked at each other, you know, so you came to greet somebody grieving and she is the one initiating yeah, prayers. Okay. So we stood up, I prayed. Immediately we finished praying and they sat down. They did not stay 10 seconds before they said, don't worry, we are leaving. We can see you are okay. So I took charge of my own life and rested totally in God. Now to how I discovered my purpose. 